Hey guys, big welcome back. Today we are lucky enough to be here at Greg's 340 gallon uh, reef tank. It's mostly SPS dominated and he is going to give us a little tour of his system and what makes this monster run and stay so beautiful. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, Mike, this is 340 gallons. It's taller than most reef tanks. When I first uh, built it, people told me that you can't have a, I think it's 36, 38 inches tall. I said you can't have it that tall because of the lighting issues and maintenance issues. Well, I've proven people wrong. Magnets come in handy, scrapers come in handy, and having no problem that you can see with the lighting. Like check out the, uh, even the SPS corals, doing fine, even down near the bottom. All right, look at this one down here. All right, that wasn't placed. So at the very bottom of the tank, they're doing well. With the lighting, I used to have all metal halide. They were all 400 watt metal halide. I then switched them out as an experiment. The two sides, these are the uh, Radeon G3 Pros, over one, two, three of them. And the middle one here is a 20K 400 watt. So they used to all be 400 watts. There's three of them now. There's a mix, so you can, it's, it's interesting, you can see the difference between the 400 and the uh, G3 Pros. You can't really, see, you can't tell the difference, can you? It, uh, it all blends perfectly to me, Greg. Um, I think, uh, I think it's amazing. Can I ask what made you switch to Radiance from the Halides? Um, the electricity was one, but I think the biggest thing was, I was, I was thinking actually of getting out of the hobby been bouncing it around just because of the, the time commitment and the cost. And I thought, you know what, if I go with the LEDs and they don't work out, because I wasn't 100% convinced they, work, they would work on the uh, roof tank, I can always switch it to uh, fresh water and still use the LEDs. You can just tone them, you can tone them down, change the color on them. So that, that was the plan. If, it, if they didn't work out, this thing was going to go to fresh water. So they're, they're working. They don't work as well as the metal halide. If I have a high value coral that I'm trying to grow out, I'll put it under the metal halide light. And then you can see the ones where the LED sides are. They, you don't get the same spread as the metal halide. You can see there's more corals that have died under the LED. They're still doing well. They don't do as well as the metal halide, but less heat, less power. And of course. Being able to make them pop at night with the with the royal blue. Yeah, that's the other thing. They can't do that. With that yeah, that's the other thing. You'd have company over, and you want to turn the lights on, have it extended another couple hours or something. And the metal halide, they they need time. They need like half an hour to. They cool down. And cool down and reboot. You can't just turn them back on. And also playing with the uh, the different colors on them. It's kind of cool. Uh, how long would you say you've been reef keeping? been over 15 years. 15 years? Did you start small? Started off with uh, 70 gallon, so it wasn't... Not too small, not no. too small. I started 29 gallon. Are you glad you got into the hobby or you think you spent too much? Yeah, I'm glad I got into it and I've spent too much. And if we ask your wife, she'll probably say you spent too much. Yeah, people ask, see, how much does this thing cost? Right? Well. If this had wheels and an engine, you could drive it around the block, no problem. Well, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, without a doubt, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine anyone having anything negative to say about that. I like what you've done with the, uh, with the egg crate in the back wall there. When I, uh, the first time I came over, I saw it and I thought, what, what did you put the egg crate? But now I see exactly what's going on once I realized it and making an awesome way for things to grow out and I imagine within a few more years you won't even see any egg crate. Yeah, it actually grows over quicker than you would think. You now, see, see in the back there, there's some bare egg crate. That the only reason it's bare back there is because just recently uh, I pulled a, a rock out of there. And, but uh, the, the stuff grows on there fairly quickly. And how, sorry, how long was this tank set up for? Well, there was an issue with the uh, glass on the first one. So I replaced the front panel. It's been about two years now. About two years, wow. 
That is amazing. And then uh, Greg's going to actually show us his fish room. Uh, to have this, you're not just going to have a 30 gallon sump underneath or a hang on filter. You need a fish room. And so we're going to go and have a look at that. Uh, before we do, let me just ask you about your water parameters. What do you do? You, do you keep it like no nitrate, very low? Do you? I don't measure it that much. No. I don't, I don't. I never. I never. I never measure nitrates, or or I don't measure a phosphates. If it's I, doing well, just leave it alone. Yeah. You know what? You can look at it. If I see there's some green algae growing, okay. There's got to be some. There has to be some phosphates in there. Why well, measure for it if you can see it? Yeah, how much there is, it doesn't matter. So, what's the solution to getting rid of phosphates? Just follow that step. I don't need to measure it. You, would you increase water changes a bit if you start getting all that algae? stuff? Yeah, all that stuff. More fil more, more filtration, less the more feeding, less of the frozen food. You get the phos band. Awesome. Well, let's uh, go and check out your fish room, and uh, I'm just going to get a nice pan of the whole. I show you here. Show you one more thing, which is really. Oh, cool. okay. What do you got there? So most of the time, you have, like you said, you have a sump yep. underneath the tank. But being in the middle of the house here, don't want the sump and all the noise and the water and the splashing underneath. So what we did was custom designed. Built a little cabinet down here. There's a false back on the cabinet, and behind that, all the pipes run down into the basement. In the first version of this tank, I had an internal overflow right in the center, but that took up a bit of real estate. So I thought, life is short. Let's change the tank out and check out what I did to the wall. My wife almost had a heart attack when I told her what my plan was. I wanted to uh, cut out. That's for ventilation, right? Well, what I'm talking about is behind it. Like, what's behind it? The, the walls, the, oh, the walls notched out. Cut right into the wall back there, nice. And look at the wall that's cut. It's a support. It's a it's a tall supporting wall. That is a very uh, see the wall. Large wall to be cutting into. So I guess if you ever move, you'll have to. Well, it could be a picture niche. There's actually oh, two. There's there you go. Two of them. Yeah, you could cover it over. Throw a little pot light in it, and it's good as new. Yeah, but it had to be. Uh, it wasn't just as simple as cutting that out and drywalling it over. It had to be supported. Braced and everything. Braced everything, and then the uh, yeah, styrofoam. Uh, to insulate it, so that was a big job in itself. Now, were you saying something about this? Uh, the the house actually had a bit of a bearing. The tank had a bit of a bearing in buying the house or something. So you're, you're about ten. So you're about ten pounds per gallon. So if we have three hundred forty to three thousand four hundred pounds just of water, the tank itself weighs like uh, five, six hundred pounds plus rock. You know. You're a few tons yeah, there anyway. It's pretty heavy. So I, I actually asked the builder. I even talked to the, uh, the builder, the site manager, when they built the house. I said, how much weight can I put on this floor? And uh, he went back to the engineers. And he said, they don't, in terms of weight on the floor, obviously it's better if the, uh, if the beams are running this way. If they're running lengthwise. They can't sure. run parallel. They've yeah. got to run against it. Exactly. So And plus it's against the wall. But... When they do load bearing, they have like the whole floor. It's not, they don't have like a, a specific, like how about 5,000 pounds against the wall? Would that be okay? They, they, don't, uh, they don't rate it that way. So they couldn't give me an answer on whether I could put 5,000 pounds. So to be safe, even though the beams are running the right way, I put a supporting beam in. And that's all visible down in your room downstairs. Yeah, yeah. that was a, that was a whole that was a huge deal getting that in here. Awesome, I love it. I love it. I wouldn't even need a TV. All right, you want to go check out the other room? All right. So when we bought the house, the basement was not finished. I had this whole basement to work with. So I thought, how big of a sump do I need now for this tank? Well, there's no maximum. The bigger, the better. So since I had basically unlimited space, I put this in as the sump. So obviously the water comes down from upstairs and it flows through this sump, which initially was designed to be a refugium. It, it, as, as time went on, I ended up with all this live rock, which is not supposed to be in here, and coral frags. It, turns in, it turned into a frag tank, but the initial design is supposed to be 
seagrass, mangroves. That was the initial idea. So the water that comes down from upstairs, I can control how much water goes through this system. Because the refugium, they prefer slow moving water. Right? You don't want a lot of you don't want high flow water no. to refugium. Just slow moving. Check this guy down here. That bad boy. He's been in he's he's probably about ten years old. Is that a reef lobster? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so anyway. So this is supposed to be refugium. I can control how how much water goes through here because the other water, the part of the water goes through that, and this other part of the water goes through this feed bin. So I just went to a uh, uh, a farm feed place and I bought this this heavy duty bin. I think it was like seventy five or hundred bucks. And so the water from that glass sump refugium then goes into this, gravity feeds into this system here. Of course I had to raise that other one up as high as I could off the floor, and that's why it's so high. To get the flow into this yeah, one. Yeah, to get the flow and reduce the amount of head pressure that the return pump has to send it back upstairs. So it goes back into here. I never knew if that refugium would work out or not, and so I made it so that if uh, it crashes, I could bypass it and everything goes through this feed bin. This feed bin is basically like the mechanical filtration that we see on most reef, on most aquarium uh, frankly. Yeah. So you have socks or some kind of floss or anything in there? Or? I, you know, if I have an issue of trying to scrub stuff out, I'll throw socks in there. But um, there it is. Not gonna show is it? Yeah, I may not show on the video, yeah. but it's basically just some live rock. Well, yeah, leftover rock is in there. But what, what's happening is. The water's just passing through this system here. There's a couple of baffles in there to get the bubbles out. Meanwhile, it's going through the uh, skimmer. And quite the skimmer it is. It's an old school skimmer, but it What's works great. What's that rated for? What size tank? Oh boy, I don't know. I bought this a long time ago. And, and then, while it's going through the skimmer, the same pump, the skimmer pump, comes back and it goes through the uh, chiller. Okay. Through the skimmer, same pump to the chiller. Of course I had the chiller back when I had the metal halides. It still comes on once in a while. Kicks on every now and then. What do you keep your water temperature at? Uh, Look right up here, 77. It's a 77.9. Um, so that's the um, aqua control. And that's that's old that's school. That's an old school aqua controller. Basically, the, the new, the one that was replaced with like Reef Keeper type of thing. Yeah. Apex. Or Apex. Apex is, I guess, the uh, yeah. better one, really. That thing's been working a long time. So what? So so uh, since you're talking with that controller, so what happens is I've got the probe right in the tank here. That's like a pH probe. Yep. And I also have a temperature probe in there. And check this out. This is really cool. Okay. So what I have, I have these pucks. So before uh, Apex or Neptune or whatever you want to call them, before they even had water on the floor sensors, I was doing it. Now they sell their own. So I, I set up my own and I connected to the I.O. port of the controller. So now, if there's water on the floor, the uh, system will uh, go off. If I had, anyway, if I had something. Oh, yeah. right. like an old car alarm. It is a car alarm. I got that off of an uh, um, auto supply place, which we called in Hamilton. There you go, just something to wake you up and yeah. say, hey, get down here. Yeah. Now what's going to happen, it's going to shoot me an email saying there's water on the floor. Because it's an automated system connected to the net. Yeah. But that right. water on the floor thing, man, that... If it's a big system, that's a must. It's always water on the floor for some reason. Yeah, and then just, I guess, get a neighbor or something that you can rely on there or whatever. To, if yeah. you're out of town, maybe just let your neighbor know or something. Yeah. Is that a, a UV sterilizer up there as well? Yeah, it's, that's on there. It's not running. It's just, it's, I can't, I, it hasn't been in operation for a few years. So it wasn't a I had, I had help, put it on there for dinophalangelites, I think the, uh, the problem was. And I think the, uh, 
Yes. The solution was UV sterilizer. So it only comes on when there's issues and it hasn't been on for I forgot it was even up there. Yeah. Yeah. I've never I've never got one. I've considered you it don't over need and it. over, but you don't need it. You don't need it. You know what? It'd be nice if they rented them. Just to clear up an issue if you've got it? Yeah, they don't do a lot. They're green water. You know, they'll take care of the green water. Yeah. Floating, floating uh, green water algae. They do that really well. And uh, maybe one other time. Um, for anyone wondering, what kind of pump are you pumping? Because this is going up from the basement. Oh, and that's a, that's a large volume of water. So yeah. you've got to have a good pump. So when I when I first set this up, people were saying, you can't have the pump in the basement. You know, but you're going to need a huge pump to pump this upstairs. Well, after a little thought, the higher you put the pump off the floor, the smaller, the you know, you don't need as big a, a pump. Less it's lifting. Yeah, so if you're going to put something in the basement, make the stand as tall as you can. The reason it's it's not higher than it is right now is because the other one is even higher because it's gravity feeding into here. So you can see, bring it up. Don't put the pump on the floor because for every inch you save, you're reducing the head. This Iwaki has been running for nonstop, I'd say uh, 14, 15 years now. 15 years. So it's a good quality pump. Oh, that's it. I know another fellow I watch on YouTube, the LA Fish Guy, that's actually, I believe he said that's his favorite brand of pump, yeah. Iwaki. So here, here, here's the pumps you want to stay away. Like some people love these pumps. And what, what do they call them? It's a sequence pump, right? Check this out. Oh, I forget what they call these pumps on the design. So what they have is they have uh, let's see, they'll they go together like this, okay? And between that and here, look at this. Between that and here, yeah. the only thing that's keeping the water from coming out is a seal. Little gasket that this fits gasket. in here. Yeah, uh, where is it? Yeah. It's a seal, right? So be. Oh, it's like a sealed bearing. Yeah, it's a seal exactly. And the uh, it spins around, and that will keep the water from coming out of the system. But anybody that has one of these type of pumps, whether it's sequence, doesn't matter who the make is. This is what happens within with salt water. Yeah. The feet away at it. Yeah. And the first thing you'll notice, it won't leak. The first thing you'll notice is, is bubbles because it'll bring air in, right? The pump is actually sucking air in. Yeah. And I noticed that because on some of my systems I'm running these and the first thing you'll see if it's, you're using it as a as a return pump or something like that, you'll see bubbles coming out. You're like, how are these bubbles coming out of there? It's because it's coming in. This is the beginning of the seal. Beginning of the that. failure. Yeah. And the manufacturers, they say you got to take these things apart. I think they say every uh, year or eight months. But anyway, look at this. Is what goes this? Is, this is what goes wrong with them. Every one of them. I don't know why people love them so much. Right? You got you to you tear this thing apart every year. You know. Yeah, it seems like a bit of a hassle. Check it. Look at this one over here. Here's my return pump. It's a long story why it's strapped up here like that. So this thing's been running on the system but now it's uh, it's it's leaking right I got a bit of a drip yeah you see you can't it's not leaking leaking but well, the salt cream coming out of the yeah walkie's not gonna do that that walkie's been running like five times longer than this thing here look up in here take a shot right up in here that's what happens with these types of pumps that's a uh, barracuda I think Turn my yeah. camera there. Yeah, can you get right up in here? See what I'm talking? Right up in here? Right up in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That. Up, up top, I see there, you got the paper towel wrapped around oh, it. Do you see where it's leaking? Or, that's, or up in the... Right in here. Right see in that here. salt? Yep. You can take a look. Took a shot right up in here, too. You can stand up in here and see it. See, it's all caked with salt. That's just, that's typical for those types of pumps. That's make it pop or not. Going on. I got my uh, pan turned right down for the smooth footage upstairs, so it's very slow to respond. Yeah. That's my pet peeve on those pumps. 
So now for me to fix it, me to actually get this pump repaired, it's not a huge deal to replace that impeller. It's a pain, but it's not a huge deal. But now I got I got to tear the whole thing down. Oh. So do you um, have a quarantine system set up? Uh, these are the quarantine systems right here. Just like if you ever need to, you just fill one up and one, two. There's a quarantine system right here. Good, good. Uh, what are you dosing? Like, how are you getting? That's dosing? a lot of SPS coral. When we talk about what it is, I saw that you had some Bionic back here. Yeah, be, well. Can you tell us what I you have, do. Uh, the uh, calcium reactor, the MRC, those are the best. Those MRC are the best calcium reactors by far. The reason being that just the build quality on them, the uh, acrylic is so thick. All the components. But a lot of people aren't a lot of people aren't using calcium reactors anymore. I don't know why not, because they, they prefer to do two-part dosing. I'm doing two-part dosing, but in small amounts. I'm doing uh, bionic. Yep. And it's just auto pumping in or Yeah, I got it on a nice cap. It's just It's just uh helps with a bit of trace elements. Awesome. And I saw that you're using reef crystals for your soul. Yeah. And you're happy with them, I'm guessing, by the looks upstairs? I've been doing that for years. Yeah, it is quite the system. Do you see yourself ever getting out of the hobby? or? Oh yeah. Yeah? All the time. Yeah, you think about it? And All the time. Every week. I'm waiting for the next crash. Yeah? The next time something goes bad, coming down. Yeah, I, I think if, uh, if that was my system and I lost everything in there, yeah. I think I would. Or not, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't even be everything, just like... A lot? Just, yeah. I can see myself, though, if, like, if my whole system, well, I don't know, if I think if my system went, I'd still just yeah. redo it. I, I, I sometimes just looking for an excuse to get, a good excuse to get out yeah. of it. He had so much extra time on my hand and money. It's, uh, spending a lot on my system. I, I definitely could see that. I'm lucky I have my hydros included where I am, so I don't uh, nice. I don't pay to run mine. Yeah. But, uh, that's yeah. excellent. I uh, really on. appreciate the, uh, the checking out the system today, and uh, maybe we'll do some video of uh, Greg's pond sometime too. He's got an amazing pond in the backyard. So if you guys uh, like pond videos. Might be something to consider checking out. And I think we're going to do a separate review on a fish feeder. I won't put it into this video, but I want to do that as a separate thing. So why don't we get on that? All right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, joining me and Greg on this. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's uh, quite the system here. I'm just looking at some buckets. But anyhow, thanks for, uh, for tagging along, and we will see you on the next video.